GMC Motorhome Living Area Electrical System. The GMC Motorhome uses two types of electrical power, 120 volt alternating current and 12 volt direct current. The 120 volt alternating current powers the plug receptacles, the water heater, and the roof mounted air conditioner. 12 volt direct current powers the remaining living area components and the automotive and chassis electrical system. A power converter connects the 12 volt and 120 volt circuits. It is located in the vehicle's electrical compartment and will be either a 30 amp or 45 amp 120 volt to 12 volt converter. Three electrical sources can supply current to the motor home, a living area battery, a motor generator, or an external electrical connection. The external connection can directly supply 120 volt current and supply 12 volt current through the converter. The motor generator can also supply 120 volt current directly and supply 12 volt current through the converter. The battery supplies 12 volt current only. In order to understand the motorhome's living area electrical system, you should know the path electricity travels from its source. Let's start at the external power connection. The motorhome's power cord has a four terminal plug. It is actually a split service cord since it contains two 120 volt circuits, each rated to carry 20 amps. The power cord is connected to circuit breakers inside the vehicle. When the cord is plugged in, 120 volt current travels from the plug to the circuit breakers and then to the water heater switch, roof air conditioner if the vehicle is equipped with one, and the 120 volt household circuits. The household circuits provide wall receptacles for kitchen appliances, TV sets, and so on. They also provide power for the operation of the optional built-in vacuum cleaner. In addition, 120 volt current from the plug passes to the converter. The converter is located in the electrical compartment and plugged into the receptacle containing the water heater switch. Its function is to take a portion of the 120 volt alternating current and change it to 12 volt rectified or direct current to operate all of the 12 volt lights and appliances in the motor home. When the 12 volt source of supply changes from the living area battery to the converter and back again, no manual switching is involved. The 12 volt appliances and lights simply draw current from whatever source is available, battery or converter. The converter contains a transformer and rectifier and will also charge the living area battery. The converter has no moving parts and should remain plugged in at all times. Besides providing 12 volt current, the converter also charges the living area battery any time it is receiving 120 volt current. So when the motor home is parked and plugged into an external power source at a campsite, the external electrical connection is the source of supply for both 120 volt alternating current and 12 volt direct current components. As mentioned previously, the motor generator can also provide 120 volt alternating current to the 120 volt circuits and through the converter will supply 12 volt direct current throughout the living area. To obtain power from the motor generator, the external power cord must be plugged into the receptacle in the external utilities compartment. The motor generator then supplies 120 volt current to the power cord. From then on, the 120 volt alternating current generated by the motor generator behaves the same as when the motor home is at a campsite external hookup. The third source of electricity for the motor home is the batteries. One supplies power for the 12 volt electrical circuitry in the living area. Another supplies 12 volt power to the automotive and chassis circuits and the third provides cranking power for the motor generator. The living area battery provides 12 volt electricity if the motor home is not plugged into an external connection and if the motor generator is not running. When the battery is supplying electricity, current flows from the battery to the automotive type fuses located in the electrical compartment and onto the various 12 volt electrical components. Both the living area and automotive batteries are charged by the engine generator. 
The living area battery can also be charged by the converter. The motor generator battery is charged by the motor generator. The automotive generator does the charging when the motor home is traveling. The converter charges the battery any time it receives 120 volt current from an external electrical connection or the motor generator. There is a battery boost switch on the instrument panel which lets the batteries be used together in the event one runs down. The switch should be left in bat normal during ordinary operating conditions so that both batteries do not become drained. With the switch in bat boost, the batteries will be in parallel. This means that the living area battery can be used to start the motorhome's engine if the automotive battery is low, or that the automotive battery can be used to run the living area 12 volt circuits if desired. If the switch is left in bat boost for too long and the batteries are not being recharged, such as running the 12 volt circuits on boost all night long, both batteries can become drained. If both batteries do become drained, the motor home can still be started if it is equipped with a motor generator. With the bat boost switch returned to bat normal, the motor generator will power the converter, which will in turn start charging the living area battery. After about 30 minutes, the switch can be set at bat boost to use the living area battery to start the engine. Then the switch should be returned to bat normal and the automotive generator will charge both batteries. There is something else you should know about the batteries and the bat boost switch. The switch can operate when the automotive battery gets low, but will not operate if the automotive battery becomes completely discharged. The bat boost solenoid is activated by a slight charge from the automotive battery. If the battery has no charge, it cannot activate the solenoid. So to start the engine, you can use one of two methods, either a jumper wire at the battery solenoid or a booster battery. You would use the first method if for some reason no booster battery were available. Use a 14 or 16 gauge wire and touch the ends of the wire to two posts at the battery solenoid. Be sure that the battery boost switch is positioned in bat boost. As you can see here, the posts that the wire must touch are the solenoid feed connection and the other is the connection from the living area battery. The slight charge from the living area battery should enable the motorhome's engine to start. The other method of starting the engine if the automotive battery is completely discharged is with a separate booster battery in the normal manner. Let's quickly recap what was just said. When the power cord is plugged into an external power hookup, 120 volt alternating current travels through the cord to the circuit breakers and on to the 120 volt components. Part of the current in the cord also goes to the power converter where it is changed to 12 volts direct current and then can power the 12 volt circuits. When the motor generator provides power for the motor home, 120 volt current flows through the power cord, the circuit breakers, and on to the 120 volt circuits. Current also goes through the cord to the power converter and on to 12 volt appliances. When the battery supplies electricity, 12 volt direct current flows from the battery to the fuses and to the 12 volt components. Remember, the battery cannot power the circuits that require 120 volt alternating current. Inevitably, you'll have motor homeowners come to your service department with electrical complaints. Sometimes the problem may stem from the owner's misunderstanding of how the motorhome's electrical system works. In those cases, take the time and explain the electrical layout to him and answer his questions. What we're going to discuss now are problems that can be traced to or are related to the overall electrical system. We will not cover malfunctions in a particular appliance. Trouble diagnosis for the electric appliances is covered in the maintenance manual and in other slide film programs. One of the simplest problems that you may encounter is overloaded circuits. Both the 12 volt DC and 120 volt AC circuits are designed to be protected by a series of fuses and circuit breakers which are located in the electrical compartment in the motorhome's hallway. 
Automotive type fuses protect the 12 volt circuits. In the event of an overloaded 12 volt circuit, you should correct the cause before installing a new fuse of the same capacity. The circuit breakers that protect the 120 volt circuits are similar to those found in modern houses. The circuit breakers are designed to snap to the off position in the event of an overloaded circuit. You should correct the cause of the overload before moving the switch back to the on position. Insufficient converter output could be indicated by three conditions occurring at the same time. One, the motor home is using external power or the motor generator. Two, the 120 volt appliances are running all right. And three, the 12 volt lights become dim and 12 volt appliances are not operating correctly. If you suspect that the converter is not functioning properly, plug it into a reliable power source and measure the voltage at the converter outputs with a voltmeter. If you don't get a reading of at least 14 volts, replace the unit with a new converter. If a customer complains to you that he was not getting adequate 120 volt current at a campsite hookup, ask him if he made sure the circuit breakers weren't open. Then ask him if he checked to make sure the voltage at the campsite where the vehicle was parked was sufficient. Tell the motor homeowner that an indication of low voltage at a campsite hookup is lights becoming dim. Other indications would be a toaster taking longer than normal to make toast or a television set operating on 120 volts that has a picture that does not quite fill the screen. A specific complaint that you might hear and that can be traced to low 120 volt current would be a roof mounted air conditioner that would not start at a campsite though it had been working correctly just before the particular hookup. If the voltage at a campsite falls below 90 volts the air conditioner will not work. In fact, the air conditioner could be damaged by prolonged attempted use under low voltage conditions. While you're asking the customer about an external connection, you might also remind him that the cord should be plugged into only a 120, 240 volt, 60 cycle rating receptacle. If the receptacle does not mate with the power cord prongs, the cord should not be plugged in. Once you've determined that the electrical source was not the reason for inadequate current, you should check the power cord wiring to make sure it has not become damaged. A steel clamp behind the housing holds the cord in place. If the owner was having a power problem while using his motor generator, and the motor generator seemed to be running correctly, there are three places that should have been checked. Were the circuit breakers open? Was the power cord plugged into the receptacle in the electrical compartment? Was the circuit breaker on the motor generator open? This is a checkpoint of which an owner may not be aware. The circuit breaker is located here on the Onan motor generator and here on the Kohler motor generator. If none of these points was the reason for a power loss, you'll have to examine the 120 volt wiring and the motor generator. If a specific electrical component doesn't function, or if you can't find the reason for a blown fuse or open circuit breaker, the cause could be a loose connection or a corroded connection. Oftentimes, just spraying a corroded connection with a cleaner lubricant will restore function to troublesome connectors. To determine if there is a loose connection, Consult the wiring diagram in the maintenance manual to specifically locate the wiring for the component in question. Then, gently move the wires. If the circuit works momentarily, you will have found the reason for the problem. The reason for moving the wiring is because loose connections may ground themselves and blow fuses or trip circuit breakers. Moving the wires will probably clear the trouble so the fuse or breaker will hold and the circuit will work. Moving the wires again may cause the trouble to return and thereby help you find the location of the loose wire. The most likely places to discover wiring faults are where connections are made. Although a lot of wiring runs within the walls of the motorhome, the connections are accessible. Therefore, you should seldom encounter a problem in an unexposed area. You should not have trouble diagnosing an electrical malfunction 
if you systematically follow the checks we have just covered. When you approach the motor home that needs servicing, first make sure fuses haven't blown or circuit breakers aren't open. Then determine whether the power source is at fault. Is there adequate battery output? Was there sufficient voltage at the external power cord? Is the motor generator producing the required voltage? And is the power converter output adequate? Next, inspect the wiring for corroded or loose connections. Finally, if you can't trace the reason for the problem to the electrical system, examine the component in question. There is no actual maintenance to perform on the motorhome's electrical system. However, you should inspect the electrical compartment when you service a vehicle to make sure there is proper airflow through and around the converter. The converter should not get wet and should be kept as clean as possible. If it becomes necessary to clean a converter, use dry compressed air. Battery maintenance is also important to proper electrical system operation. The fluid level in each battery should be checked regularly, and the battery, battery cable terminals, and battery hold-down brackets should be kept clean. A usually neglected area is the range hood fan. Accumulations of dirt and grease from cooking can cause the fan to become sluggish or inoperative, and the overloaded fan motor can cause fuses to blow. The air filter for the roof-mounted air conditioner must be kept clean for the same reason. A clogged filter can cause the fan motor to overwork and may in turn trip the circuit breaker. If you have any remaining questions concerning the living area electrical system, consult your GMC motorhome maintenance manual. PG for the entire vehicle. MH2.